Introduction Welcome, aspiring medical students, to today's lecture on the complex and intricate world of poliovirus. In this extensive script, we will delve into various aspects of poliovirus, its mechanisms, immune response, genetics, eradication strategies, vaccine efficacy, assessment and diagnosis of related conditions, neurological complications and post-polio syndrome, rehabilitation approaches, antiviral drug development, emergency response strategies, and the social and cultural implications of polio. Through this comprehensive exploration, we hope to equip you with a profound understanding of the intricate nature of poliovirus and its implications in the field of neurology. Now, let us embark on this educational journey, beginning with the mechanisms of poliovirus entry and spread. Poliovirus, a type of enterovirus, enters the body through contaminated food, water, or feces. It survives the stomach and attaches to specific receptors on intestinal cells. It then enters the cells through a process called receptor-mediated endocytosis, where it is released into the cell's cytoplasm. The viral RNA serves as a template for replication and translation, leading to the formation of new virus particles. These particles assemble into viral capsides and are released from the infected cell, perpetuating the spread of the virus. Understanding these mechanisms helps in developing strategies against poliovirus. Next, we will discuss the immune response to the infection. The immune system responds to poliovirus infection through humoral and cellular immunity. Humoral immunity involves B cells producing antibodies that neutralize the virus, preventing its replication and spread. Cellular immunity involves T cells recognizing and destroying infected cells. This immune response provides long-lasting immunity, which is further maintained through vaccination. Studying the immune response to poliovirus infection is important for developing prevention and treatment strategies. In the next section, we will explore the molecular genetics and evolution of poliovirus strains. Poliovirus, like many other RNA viruses, exhibits a high mutation rate due to the lack of a proofreading mechanism during its replication process. As a result, various poliovirus strains, known as serotypes, have emerged over time. There are three identified serotypes of poliovirus, serotype 1, serotype 2, and serotype 3. While the genome sequence of these serotypes is highly conserved, Genetic variations arise through point mutations, insertions, and deletions during replication. These genetic changes can lead to the evolution of virulent strains with altered antigenic properties, potentially impacting the efficacy of vaccines. It is crucial to monitor the genetic evolution of poliovirus strains to ensure that vaccines remain effective against circulating strains. By analyzing the molecular genetics of poliovirus strains, researchers can gain insights into viral evolution, transmission patterns, and potential vaccine challenges. This knowledge aids in the development of effective strategies to combat this infectious disease. We have now laid the foundation for understanding the mechanisms, immune response, and genetic aspects of poliovirus. We will continue our exploration by examining polio eradication strategies and the Global Polio Eradication Initiative. The Global Polio Eradication Initiative, GPEI, was established in 1988 to eliminate polio worldwide. This initiative focuses on four key strategies, routine immunization, supplemental immunization activities, surveillance, and mop-up campaigns. Routine immunization ensures that infants receive polio vaccines as part of their regular immunization schedule. The two main vaccines used are IPV and OPV. Supplemental immunization activities involve mass vaccination in high-risk areas to boost immunity and stop transmission. Surveillance tracks poliovirus infections and monitors vaccination effectiveness, mainly through AFP surveillance. Mop-up campaigns target outbreaks or areas with recent polio cases to quickly interrupt transmission. Challenges, including vaccine-derived poliovirus outbreaks and vaccine hesitancy, still exist, but the GPE is committed to achieving a polio-free world. Vaccination plays a paramount role in preventing and controlling polio. Two main types of polio vaccines, the inactivated poliovirus vaccine, IPV, and the oral poliovirus vaccine, OPV are instrumental in curbing poliovirus transmission. IPV, composed of inactivated poliovirus strains, is administered through injection. It induces a robust immune response, primarily targeting humoral immunity. IPV is predominantly used in countries with a low risk of poliovirus transmission. OPV, on the other hand, is an attenuated live vaccine administered orally. It stimulates both humoral and cellular immune responses, providing local intestinal immunity in addition to systemic protection. OPV is advantageous in areas where poliovirus transmission is still ongoing due to its ability to induce virus-specific mucosal immunity. The strategic use of polio vaccines, 
tailored to individual epidemiological contexts, is key in achieving and maintaining polio eradication. Vaccination campaigns, routine immunization, and well-coordinated efforts have significantly reduced the global burden of polio virus infections. Continuing our exploration, let's now shift our focus to the assessment and diagnosis of acute flaccid paralysis, AFP, an important indicator of polio virus infection. Acute flaccid paralysis, AFP, is a key indicator of potential polio virus infection. It presents as a sudden onset of limb weakness or paralysis. Early identification and prompt detection of AFP cases are crucial for polio surveillance and control. Healthcare providers must conduct a thorough clinical evaluation, including a detailed history, physical examination, and neurologic assessment, to identify potential AFP cases. Diagnostic tests like electromyography, EMG, nerve conduction studies, and magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, can help confirm the diagnosis and rule out other causes of paralysis. AFP surveillance programs play a vital role in detecting and investigating suspected poliovirus cases, with close collaboration between healthcare facilities, laboratories, and surveillance systems for timely specimen collection, testing, and reporting. Early recognition and accurate diagnosis by healthcare professionals contribute to targeted interventions, surveillance efforts, and ultimately, the eradication of poliovirus. Let's now move on to discussing the neurological complications of polio and post-polio syndrome. Polio virus infection can lead to various neurological complications, some of which can manifest long after the initial infection. These complications include muscle weakness, muscle atrophy, joint contractures, and skeletal deformities. Post-polio syndrome, PPS, is a late-onset condition that affects individuals who have previously recovered from acute polio virus infection. PPS typically presents years or even decades after the initial infection. Its symptoms include new muscle weakness, muscle fatigue, joint and muscle pain, and decreased endurance. The exact pathophysiology of PPS is not fully understood, but it is believed to involve mechanisms such as the degeneration of surviving motor neurons, muscle overuse, and inadequate compensation for previous muscle damage. Management strategies for neurological complications and post-polio syndrome primarily focus on rehabilitation and supportive measures. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, orthotic devices, and assistive technology play crucial roles in improving functional abilities and enhancing quality of life for individuals affected by these conditions. Continuing our exploration, let us now shift our attention to the neurophysiological and electromyographic evaluation in polio survivors. In the 8. Neurophysiological and Electromyographic Evaluation in Polio Survivors section, we will discuss assessing muscle function, identifying motor unit pathology, and determining neuronal integrity in polio survivors. Electromyography, EMG, measures the electrical activity of muscles, identifying patterns of denervation and re -innervation. This helps distinguish post-polio syndrome from other factors. Nerve conduction studies, NCS, assess peripheral nerve function and damage, guiding rehabilitation strategies. Neurophysiological assessment techniques like motor evoked potentials, MEPs, and sensory evoked potentials, SEPs, provide insights into motor and sensory pathways. Understanding these evaluations allows healthcare professionals to tailor rehabilitation approaches for better outcomes. In the next topic, we will focus on rehabilitation approaches for polio survivors. In summary, rehabilitation is crucial for individuals affected by polio. A multidisciplinary team creates personalized treatment plans, including physical therapy to improve muscle strength and prevent complications. Occupational therapy focuses on daily living skills and adapting the environment. Orthotic devices provide support and enhance mobility. Pain management is essential, and addressing psychosocial and emotional needs is vital. This comprehensive approach offers holistic care for patients. Next, we will discuss poliovirus replication and targets for antiviral drug development. Understanding how poliovirus replicates is essential for developing effective antiviral drugs. Researchers can target specific steps in the virus's replication process to find potential treatments. One possible target is the translation of viral RNA into proteins. By disrupting this process, researchers can hinder the production of new viral particles. Viral proteases, which are crucial for protein processing and maturation, can also be targeted for therapy. Blocking their activity disrupts viral replication and assembly. Moreover, inhibiting the viral RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, RDRP, important for viral genome replication, shows promise. By inhibiting RDRP, researchers can suppress viral replication and reduce viral load. However, challenges such as drug resistance and off-target effects must be addressed. Yet, 
Ongoing research into viral replication and potential drug targets offers hope for effective poliovirus treatments. Next, we will explore polio outbreaks and emergency response strategies. Polio outbreaks, although rare in countries with robust vaccination programs, can occur due to importation of the virus or vaccine-derived poliovirus, VDPV. These outbreaks highlight the need for rapid and effective emergency response strategies. Containment measures, such as enhanced surveillance, mass vaccination campaigns, and targeted vaccination in high-risk areas, play a crucial role in limiting the spread of poliovirus during outbreaks. Rapid mobilization of healthcare resources, including healthcare workers, laboratory facilities, and vaccine supplies, is essential for effective emergency response. Genomic sequencing of poliovirus isolates helps track the origin and transmission patterns of the virus during outbreaks. This information enables authorities to implement targeted interventions, focusing efforts on controlling transmission within affected communities. Furthermore, risk communication, community engagement, and addressing local concerns play vital roles in eliciting public cooperation and ensuring the success of emergency response strategies. Timely and accurate dissemination of information helps build trust, combat vaccine hesitancy, and maintain community resilience. Moving forward, let us now delve into the social and cultural implications of polio. Polio, throughout history, has had profound social and cultural implications. The disease has caused significant disability, social stigma, and discrimination against individuals affected by polio. Understanding the social and cultural aspects surrounding polio is crucial for addressing these challenges. Historically, polio outbreaks have led to fear and panic within communities, affecting interpersonal relationships and community dynamics. As a result, affected individuals have often faced social isolation, limited educational opportunities, and restricted employment options. Policies and interventions targeting the social and cultural impact of polio aim to promote inclusivity, eliminate discrimination, and enhance the quality of life for individuals with disabilities. Comprehensive rehabilitation programs, education campaigns, and legislation promoting accessibility are essential components of such interventions. Embracing diversity, fostering community engagement, and challenging societal misconceptions surrounding polio contribute to building an inclusive society that supports the rights and well-being of all individuals. In conclusion, our study of poliovirus has revealed its intricate nature in neurology. We have explored its entry and dissemination mechanisms, neurological complications, rehabilitation strategies, and sociocultural influences. The worldwide campaign against polio has made significant advancements, though obstacles such as vaccine hesitancy and outbreaks persist. As aspiring medical practitioners, equipped with this knowledge, you play a vital role in eradicating polio, delivering holistic care, and fostering inclusivity and resilience. Remember, this battle extends beyond the classroom, together, we can eliminate polio and create a healthier future for everyone.